Welcome to the More Demand Podcast, where we help you generate more demand for your products and services. Every episode, we give you tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to get the best out of your digital marketing. Less frustration, more demand. Here's your host, Lawrence Howlett, with this week's freshest tips. Hello and welcome to the More Demand podcast, episode number 28. Today I have with me David Bain from digitalmarketingradio.com. I was lucky enough to be on David's show as well and it's a pleasure to welcome him onto the More Demand podcast. Today we haven't really got an agenda as such. In fact, we're just going to take a bit of a dive into David's story, how he launched Digital Marketing Radio, how he chose his passion over finding a particular audience. He did it actually the other way around. You know, a lot of people are saying find an audience first and then serve them. What David did was actually start with his passion for digital marketing and produce an excellent show that's had an unbelievable amount of guests on there. So I'm really looking forward to chewing the fat with David today, giving you some pointers in podcasting, giving you some pointers in how to launch uh, YouTube videos as well, and an overall marketing mix. David's going to go through his own 26-week digital marketing plan and the 13 pillars of internet marketing as well. So there is a ton of value in here today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the More Demand podcast with my guest, David Bain. Hi, David. Welcome to the More Demand podcast. Lawrence, it's wonderful to be on with you, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's nice to uh, to have a you know an English speaking voice rather than <laughs> all the Americans that I've uh, been having on the show. So it's uh, it's nice to bring it bring it back home a little bit. Uh, a, a UK UK speaking voice with a Scottish accent, maybe. But yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So uh, so yeah, today we're going to to sort of dive in in, in all sorts of uh, you know digital marketing activities, and I know you host your own uh, digital marketing radio dot com uh, podcast and, and uh, video. Uh, series as well so just tell me a little bit about uh, you know the story behind that okay sure thank you yeah well um, in terms of podcasting in general I actually started my first podcast in 2006 and um, I kind of wish I'd kept it up a bit but um, I dabbled a bit but um, in about 2014 I decided to get absolutely serious about it because I am passionate about the audio medium so 2014 I launched digital marketing radio And um, I'm just about to record my 150th episode of that. Oh, wow. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you very much. Um, So I love doing that. You know, I love trying to get the audio as good as possible and getting on some great digital marketing guests. My background is digital marketing in general, and I love staying up to date with everything that's happening in, in the industry. So doing that, what I do is I interview really the top digital marketers out there. And that kind of kills two birds with one stone in that um, I can learn. I really, you know, have fun doing it. Um, I get to talk talk with the top digital marketers, but then I can um, produce it as a podcast as well. So um, that's what I love to do. Yeah, and I think you know that that's a, an interesting point straight out of the uh, out of the gate that you know staying up to date with all the content that's out there. You know how how do you know how to you know what to to read what to you know take on board because there's so many places that we could go out there and get content you know how do you know what's good advice and and what's not good advice i think that's um probably the 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 toughest part of things because um back 10 15 years ago or so um if you were talking about internet marketing which was which what it was called back then rather than digital marketing if you're talking about that anything online it was really just one specialism by itself and there wasn't so much to it nowadays it's impossible to know everything about everything so you really have to become a a micro niche specialist within an area that you're absolutely specialist uh, absolutely passionate about and then you have to find other experts within that particular area and um follow them on Twitter, um, obviously subscribe to their email and um, see what they're saying on an on a ongoing basis. And don't make decisions um, very quickly uh, based upon what everyone is saying. You know, Take time to actually find people that you trust and you'll probably end up following three or four or five different people who you view as leaders in the particular niche that you want to become a real professional at. And that's how I personally go about um, 
deciding which people to actually follow. Yeah, because I think, you know, there's a whole uh, sort of thing as being a magpie and just following the the shiny object. And I know Mm. a a lot of our, you know, listeners that are trying to generate those high quality leads in their service business, you know, they think about, oh, that's the latest tactic. And how do I use that tactic? They want to dive straight into it. And I think taking a step back and, you know, reviewing, you know, does that sit with my skill set? Do I need to employ that skill set? Because a, a lot of people don't have these skills and they want to learn it straight away and deploy it in their businesses straight away. So that that really, you know, is is a part of their business that they need to step back from a little bit, I guess, and, and think, you know, who are the three, four influencers that I want to, to follow and who's going to do it, you know, best for my business, I guess. Absolutely. And is it the medium that's relevant for your particular market as well? Because the buzzy place to be at the moment is Snapchat. Um, But in terms of my target markets, I find that um, people who like to listen to me are probably um, slightly established entrepreneurs um, in their about 40s. And generally, those kind of people aren't on Snapchat. Um, You're more likely to find them on on Twitter or LinkedIn if it's B2B or um, Facebook if it's B2C. So as well as actually going to places that you're passionate about personally, obviously your market's going to be there at the same time. Yeah, and I think the, you know, as you say, with Snapchat, probably the millennials of of the world, you know, are on that platform. So (laughs) it is definitely worth thinking about, you know, where are people hanging out online and where can you target them and connect with them? So with talk talk to me about Digital Marketing Radio and how you started to build your audience. And, And in fact, how did you decide even what your audience was going to look like and who you could serve best? Well, I kind of did things the opposite way around in that um, I did things that I was passionate about myself and saw how my audience evolved. A lot of people advise you maybe to, you know, research your audience, ask them questions and build a product around that. What I prefer to do is actually establish myself in an industry that I'm passionate about and build some followers from that and then have a bit of a conversation with people and to see what people are struggling with after that and perhaps build products and services around that. But I I wouldn't actually choose to go into a market based upon financially where I thought that that's where the opportunity was. Um, I would simply enter a market based upon what I'm passionate about, focus on delivering high quality value, interacting with hopefully the leaders within that arena for a year or so and then you know after a year or so you can sit back and really decide okay uh, this is what I'm going to position myself as within that particular sector. Yeah and I think as you say that the the time piece that it's going to take at least a year to put you know yourself out there as an influencer or you know even as a someone that that's going to be trusted as an authority you know that's going to take a lot of time to create that presence online whether it be through podcasting whether it be through blogging whether it be through video and I I know you're you're heavily into video as well so if you could take us through some of the uh, things that that video you know has changed for you in terms of your business model and how it's maybe changed your uh, you know the podcast in itself and how you transitioned to to video and, and how that's worked. Yeah, sure. I mean, to a certain degree, it's a learning mechanism for myself in that um, I love to find out more about these kind of things and become as good as I can about operating um, as a presenter in front of video as, as well as audio. But in terms of my journey in video, I mean, I was on YouTube in about 2007 or so, um, having uh, publishing videos there. I, I've published a couple of videos of digital marketing training seminars that have had uh, about 100,000 views. Um, and that's how you know I've been most effective on mediums like YouTube. I am publishing my own podcast now um, as a face-to-face interview on video. But generally, those um, views on YouTube will probably only be about 100 or, or something like that for an average episode. So not a massive amount. I'll get loads more listens as an audio podcast. But um, what I do is I um, structure and advise people to actually structure the development of their podcast around actually going 
um, through four different phases, um, starting off with producing an audio podcast, first of all. Um, secondly, an audio podcast as live. So if you've got um, an intro or an outro or other bumpers that you're putting in throughout your show, then try and actually publish it as a live um, show. You can still just be talking to people on, on Skype. Then introducing video after that. If you're really comfortable with the audio medium, then moving on to pre-recorded video after that. And then only in the fourth phase, actually introducing live shows. So doing um, your podcast maybe on a Blab or on a Google Hangout or something like that. Uh, and I, I think it's important to go through that process and become comfortable at speaking into a microphone, at recording your podcast, at the structure of your show. And um, that's the path that I went through probably over about a year or so before I got semi-comfortable doing what I'm doing. You, you're always trying to improve things and um, you're never quite satisfied with where you are. Yeah, and John Lee Dumas said exactly the same thing when he was on the, on the podcast a few weeks ago, that he now does 15 episodes back-to-back -back in a single day, and he'll do that over two days. And, you know, that's a, a whole month's worth of shows in two days. But as he said, you know, that took a long time for him to get to that point, to be able to have the same enthusiasm, to be able to, you know, just have a voice at the end of that. I mean, I, if I was speaking for 15 podcasts in a row, <laughs> I would be knackered by the end of that. So I know he's trained himself up to do that. So again, people out there listening and, and you know, wanting to launch a podcast or, you know, launching your, your content marketing uh, strategy, you know, just expect it to take a little bit of time. You know, you're not going to have that silver bullet straight away, which I think, you know, and you've got a 26-week digital marketing plan. I think that resonates quite well with that sort of timeline. So if we could talk about that 26-week that digital marketing plan that, that you have and, you know, what goes into that? Yeah, sure. Um that is, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what part of the story to actually start from. Let's start with um, a seminar that I gave in April 2007, and that was called The 13 Pillars of Internet Marketing. And um, that was my first kind of big seminar that, that I actually gave. And uh, I got a lot of positive feedback, and the only piece of constructive negative feedback I received was, okay, um, a lot of amazing information there, but give me a plan. What, what do I need to do now? So the 26-week plan actually evolved from the 13 pillars of internet marketing. Um, so by about September that year, I was doing seminars across the UK on the 26-week digital marketing plan, uh, full-day seminars uh, to largely corporates, banks, universities, people like that. And um, I was taking them through what I called actually at the time the four phases of digital marketing, um, going through website structure. Um, phase two was called automation and launch um, back then, which was about um, making sure that you have many systems as possible built into your website to make life easy for yourself, really. Um, and then the third phase was about broadening your base, so not relying just on a few sources of traffic, because of course, um, if you're rel reliant on just one source of traffic, even though that source of traffic is very profitable, then it's not necessarily going to happen like that all the time into the future. So broadening your base of traffic. And then phase four, I called broadening your, your horizon. So back then I even talked about um, podcasting and introducing um, new media into your mix. So th things like video as well. So, you know, I, I was I was really passionate about digital marketing, still am. Um, what I di have done is uh, I've gone through to three different incarnations of the, of the same course. So I think 2007, 2010, I think 2014 were the, were, were the years that I actually produced massive versions of it. My latest version is um, an online version which actually lasts for 26 hours, so 26 hours of video um, going through different things. And... I'm at the stage now of thinking, you know, digital marketing has become such a big beast that um, I can't produce uh, another version that tries to cover absolutely everything. I, th I think it's the most comprehensive course of its, t of its type, taught by a single person probably, but um, I, I don't think I, I want to produce another by myself. It might evolve into something else. Me personally, I'm now niching down as, as you like, uh, and I'm focusing more on how to actually produce your own show and turn that into a live online broadcast. And uh, my market is entrepreneurs and leaders and other experts, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. 
Yeah, I think, you know, you, you mentioned there about, you know, having a full comprehensive course and that the menu for you was just getting too big. So you were taking on, you know, maybe too much in terms of I've got to teach uh, webinars in this uh, digital marketing campaign uh, in the, your course. You've also got to teach about podcasting. You've got to teach about maybe paid ads on Google, on Facebook. You've also got to teach, you know, way back the uh, a few more steps back, the foundation of how to optimize your website and they're just getting far too much for a single course and also if that's just a single person taking that course there is probably an overwhelm of information they don't know where to get started so I think that's a smart move in in niching down and really thinking about who can you serve best and I know that will resonate with the audience in terms of they've got maybe too big a menu and how did you come about deciding that you wanted to help people specifically you know taking a podcast into an online event was that was that an sort of organic experience or did you you know sit down and think right i've really got a niche down on this and and how did you figure that out it was fairly organic uh, i knew that i was passionate about podcasting so you know i wanted to start a, a, a podcast where i tried to de- deliver the highest possible quality experience for the listener and at the same time i wanted to learn about other things I've um, also hosted a, a live show every Friday called This Week in Organic. Um, it goes out at 4 p.m. In, 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 the UK, in the UK time on a Friday. And that um, is basically a live webinar for an hour. So I've incorporated that into what I was doing. I, I, was, I, I got comfortable with how Google Hangouts worked. Blab appeared on the scene, uh, scene which is a great um, online um, communications interacting, but also a um, bit of technology where you can actually record a podcast on. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, was, I was passionate about those things. And I also um, was aware that um, a few other people were out there teaching podcasting and how to make money podcasting. That's not my passion. You know, I, I, I don't want to teach people how to find sponsors. Um, I want to talk um, with real business people. I, I've also got an MBA as well. I, I'm passionate about business, business strategy. So I want people to be able to use podcasting and live broadcasting as part of their communications mix within an existing business rather than actually start a podcast as, with a view to making money from it. Yeah, I think that's really important in terms of you know, businesses that maybe are struggling to generate high quality leads and they think the podcast is the silver bullet, whereas actually it's just part of a, a wider communication strategy, as you say. So how would you start to help people that maybe, you know, thinking that a podcast might add some, uh, you know, add some value to their business, help them connect with their audience and then taking that to an online event and you know what that looks like in terms of how do you even prepare for for an online event like that well i mean the the key is to get started is not to make things too complicated for yourself. I mean, at the moment, yeah, I've got a big fancy microphone, uh, a mixer, a digital recorder in there. I've got my iPad connected to my mixer as well, so if I want, I can play some different effects at the moment. But that's obviously not where you want to start. Um, you want to start with a, a, a decent, simple microphone um, that's plugged into your computer using USB um, that, um, yes, has a stand next to you just so that you, you keep your hands free. But um, uh, there's some lovely microphones out there. In the UK, there's the Samsung Q2U. In the US, it's the ATR2005, which is um, two very similar microphones. And um, they're what's called dynamic microphones, which means that um, you speak probably about four inches away from them. If you move much further away from them, then the actual sound of your voice is going to decrease quite a bit. So it's very good at repelling background noise. Um, but that's all you need to know and uh, need, need to start with. You can get a very, very good quality sound um, to a first podcast by doing that. Um, have a little think about um, your business and obviously have a look in iTunes to see in relation to what you do, what other podcasts are out there. And ha- have a listen and have a think about um, what you could do slightly differently. And um, perhaps, you know, if you have a, a friend or colleague who would want to do a podcast with you, then uh, what they could actually add to it as well. But um, the important thing is just to get started. Um, perhaps have a conversation on Skype with um, with um, someone that you want to interview. Um, record it just using a free bit of software in Skype. Uh, and then you can get um, a decent enough quality recording doing that. Uh, publish it um, 
you know, fairly simply using Pod, Pod, um, Pod Press. Podbean, I use. I use Podbean or uh, the other one. It's not okay. Linda, is it? It's um, uh, begins with an L. Can't remember now off the top of my head, but we'll link to it in the show notes. Y- yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I meant that. I'm, I'm actually thinking of um, a, po- a podcast um, plugin in WordPress um, that I used to use a few years ago. It's funny when you talk off this cuff, cuff your um, <laughs> the t- top of your head, you can sometimes actually forget about the software that you use every single day. But um, I think Libsyn's the other um, tool that you mean, is it? So there we the go. Actual- that's yeah. your host itself, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you can use um, the, the, the Blueberry plugin um, and Libsyn um, if you want to get going fairly quickly. Um, the, the important thing is, I would say, is make sure that you submit your own RSS feed to um, Libsyn or whatever audio host you're going to use. Um, so um, this RSS feed um, will be available um, inside this Blueberry plugin uh, within WordPress should be fairly easy to actually recognize. Um, if you submit the Libsyn feed or another feed that you don't have complete control over, if you do decide to move hosts at some point in the future, then that might be problematic in the future. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to um, give someone a few steps just to get started quickly with a podcast because, you know, if if you follow a course, um, you could be, you could be, two months down the line and still not having actually published your first episode. Um, if you decide that podcasting is for you after using that, you know, fairly decent microphone and recording three episodes and getting it out there on iTunes, then absolutely, you know, you need to become more professional at it if possible, get a slightly better setup after that and decide on show structure and subjects for the future. But I mean, the wonderful thing about iTunes is you can submit your RSS feed and through that feed, you can change your show title and show description automatically. So you don't have to commit to what the long-term description and format of your show will look like when you initially submit that. So it's just submitting that feed to begin with, getting yourself listed in there on iTunes, and you can change your format a a little bit after that. And and then once you get comfortable with doing that a little bit, um, the next step is if, if you want to try live broadcasting, I would suggest to go with Blab. Blab's really easy to, to hop on. They'll, they'll recognize your microphone. You need to have um, a webcam. Um, there are reasonable webcams nowadays integrated into laptops. Um, I go for the Logitech um, C920, I think it's called, which is um, a, a reasonable, about £50 cost um, HD webcam. And if you use that, then that will be fairly future-proof. Um, so that's a lovely webcam to, to to get on, and then just go and blab for a chat with people. You can actually hop on um, to chat on other people's blabs, and it will give you the experience of interacting with people online via video before actually hosting your own show. So hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable in that situation. Yeah, and I, I've not heard of Blab myself before. In fact, you know, I've just been introduced to it uh, very recently. So, how did you? How are you using that service to uh, you know, take that that sort of live video element and still mix it with a, a podcast? You still can create a podcast, but it's also live, and people can jump on a a, a Blab, as it were. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Blab will let you uh, record the Blab. They'll let you record the video and give you the audio afterwards but that's never going to be the optimum quality audio so if you decide that you're going to use that to record a podcast then what I do is I have um, an external audio recorder called a a Zoom H5 and I I use that to record from a mixer so I'm recording my microphone there Um, I also am using another third party bit of software called Zencaster and Zencaster will um, be on my browser and record my audio locally but the important thing is they actually uh, record the audio of the person that I'm talking with locally as well so I can take the audio from Zencaster and blend it together afterwards in Adobe Audition which I use for my um, audio editing afterwards as well so um, you, you have to but that's why I was suggesting before you have to get a little bit comfortable with the process of um, recording your audio podcast first and then audio podcast as live first before moving on to video. And if you go through that process that, that I recommend most people, then when you do hop on Blab, you won't have to worry about your audio. You won't be thinking about that. You know, you, you'll be worrying about your video. And you certainly don't need to be worrying about 
too many things at the same time when you hop onto something like Blab to begin with. So if we take a, a couple of steps uh, back up in, into the, the strategy arena and really think about you know, how can we help an audience to solve their challenges because I know a lot of people in uh, you know service industry uh, businesses create content that really speaks to their peers and their competitors you know they'll create a group on LinkedIn for digital marketers if they're an agency well that's not sort of the right strategy is it you really want to focus on your audience's challenges and and how to to connect with them so how how did you do that with digital marketing radio well, um, that, that's probably not a great example, to be honest with you, because uh, I, I followed my passion and I created content around that. Uh, and that's something that I do uh, myself personally, um, just to, I don't know, be fulfilled to a certain degree. Um, but in terms of um, what I would advise um, businesses who are really focused on revenue is, yeah, absolutely, you have to produce content based about around what your audience are looking for. Um, so you have to um, have a survey at the heart of things to begin with. Um, if hopefully you've got an email list, um, then you can ask sim uh, people the, the, the simple question, what is it that frustrates you about this industry, about these, buying these products and services? What don't you think um, this industry has served um, effectively buy to begin with and uh, you'll hear about gripes and um, wishes from customers and hopefully you may actually even hear about a few different product ideas as well. Now if you've already got a product then you will actually be receiving different customer inquiries about um, you know whether or not they're happy with using the product or the service and that can form a great basis for content. If you've got Google Analytics uh, and people actually start to um, search for your brand in relation to certain things. You may pick up different search queries that people are using to find your website. And then you can use that as a source of writing future content in your website. Many frequently asked questions you know, aren't as filled out, aren't as complete as they could possibly be. And that's because... Uh, customers aren't listened to. So, you know, if you listen to your customers, they really will provide you with the source of your content. And that can apply to blog posts, but it can also apply to podcast episodes as well. You know, I um, interviewed um, a, a podcaster uh, who was in the massage business um, quite recently. And um, they were saying all they do is they talk to their customers about their frustrations, um, about the challenges that they're having. And then they publish podcasts based on that because they're a podcaster. So, you know, just, just listen, really listen and have that listening culture throughout your organization. And then try, and try to blend your departments as well. Try and have that marketing ethos within customer service and sales as well, rather than actually just segmenting things into tradi traditional departments. And, you know, to, to be able to do that, what, what do you think of some of the sort of starting steps as you said that there's a survey uh, you know if you don't have an email list there's still the option to get some paid traffic to an initial survey I guess and and what sort of traffic sources might you be able to use for that well I mean if you don't have you know a massive list to begin with then the telephone is probably one of the most underutilized tools that you have in an office and many people probably don't use it enough nowadays you know having that conversation with people in a, in a digital world is quite novel um, to some customers and customers will really appreciate that. So that, that, that physical touch is, is, is very, very important. Um, I mean, I uh, sent a, a postcard out to uh, all the people that I'd, um, I'd um, interviewed last year for a particular podcast. And, um, you know, the people that received that, a lot of people took photos of it and uh, published it on Twitter and we're very happy indeed about that. So if, if, you, if you can do something a little bit different to reach out to your customers, I think that um, is, um, is, is, is probably a great starting point. Um, so there was a second part to your question as well, Lawrence, and I'm just trying to remember what that was. Uh, yeah, me too, to be honest. But <laughs> I, I love that, uh, bringing that you know, digital world into a, something tangible that you can you know, pick up, you can read, you can, uh, it's, it's being that sort of remarkable person that that you can remember and that you'll do business with because you trust them as an authority you've you know subscribed to their podcast you've downloaded their uh, you know 
lead magnets as we call them and then they've also actually interacted with you offline as well you know maybe giving you a, a phone call or something like that that just stands out from the crowd i mean how many customers if, if you think about it have you actually had a conversation with in in the real world you know lately um for me you know we've got a you know, nearly five, six thousand subscribers on our email list. I've probably had conversations with ten of those. So for me to actually think, how can I have proper conversations with that sort of number of people? You know, that's a scary thought. But there are definitely people that I could serve better by having those those real world conversations with and i think pat flynn does it in a great way from the smart passive income he goes to a coffee house uh, you know once a, a month or i think even maybe once a week and says you know if you're in the area pop down and have a chat and that's a great way to get to know people that that you know want to connect with you Absolutely. And, and talking about real world conversations, we're obviously having one now, even though it's, it's, it's virtual to a certain degree, you know, we're, we're still talking, you know, using our voices. And um, that's an amazing power that podcasting has. I, to me, um, podcasting is the ultimate networking tool uh, with real industry leaders. You know, I've, I've interviewed probably about 250 top digital marketers around the world. And um, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet them locally. And even if they had been at a local networking event, I'd be lucky to get maybe five minutes with them um, because there's so many other people around them as well, like like bees. And I'm talking to these people for 45 minutes or something like that. And then you can make an impression on them. They'll remember you. And that's why so many people are coming back to me on my special event shows, which, you know, I'm trying to make a, a yearly one on, in, in December. Um, you know, last year it was 54. Hopefully this year uh, it'll be three figures of, of people that come on. And um, you keep on building that relationship. You, you don't want to just be interviewing someone for one podcast episode and then dropping the ball by not contacting, contacting that person ever again. You know, th these are people that, that may be able to help you in the future. They might not be a customer. Um, you know, they, they might not um, ne necessarily um, have anything to do with your business personally, but they might know someone or be able to recommend you to someone else in the future. And if you keep on building these high quality relationships with people like that, surely that's going to be very, very beneficial in the future. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, from just launching the More Demand podcast, we're only at episode, this will be episode number 28 now, and it's allowed me to connect with people like John Lee Dumas, like Joe Polizzi from, from uh, Content Marketing Institute, like Rand Fishkin from Moz, you know, all these big names that cost thousands of pounds to come and speak at your, you know, a big event, but yet... I've had, you know, as you say, a 45 minute conversation with them. They're in my Skype contact book. And, and the other day I was uh, looking for a contact that could talk about email marketing. And we've got someone lined up now. And I just asked Rand Fishkin, you know, who do you know that's uh, an absolute guru on uh, email marketing and dropped me straight a contact. And then you've got a warm conversation with that person as well to say, hey, Rand introduced me to you. Uh, I'd love to, you know, bring you on the show. And that just opens you up as an authority as well, because you're associating yourself with all these big players in the market. And that builds your own authority as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and to begin with, um, you have to ch chase people to be guests on your show. But um, you, you reach a point, it's a plateau where people start um, contacting you. And uh, it's, it's quite incredible. After a while, you almost have to say no to lots of people or um you, you, you could make the mistake of not making the effort to reach out to people that you really want to be on the show because too many people are actually contacting you. And um, <laughs> it's a different challenge yeah. to be in. So talk to me about your online event that had, uh, how many was it, 56 or 54? Yeah, yeah 50, 54 or so. Um, yeah. but, but who's keeping count, really? It's, um, it, was, um, it was a fun event that um, I decided to host. It was, um, it was called the Christmas Special, um, my 2015 Christmas Special show. And it talks about digital marketing predictions for the year 2016. So what I did for that is I invited all the people that had been on the podcast so far. Um, so that was probably about 100 or so at the time. So just over half of them you know, were able to make it. And I used um, my scheduling tool. Uh, I believe you use it as well, Schedule Once, Lawrence? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great tool. Yes, yeah. So um, I used that um, and I used the special 
um, version of that um, to actually change my availability down to five minute segments and two people were able to book the same slot. So for two hours, um, I had people actually use that tool to book a five minute slot, which which turned out being obviously two and a half minutes because they were on with someone else at the same time. And um, it worked incredibly well. You know, I was um, I lined up the emails beforehand to make them very aware of the fact that they had to be there at that particular time. They had to give me you know a very specific prediction in relation to digital marketing and and start with their name and and where were they from and then give me their prediction because um, they didn't have that much time. But it was a bit of an experiment, um, but it, it worked very well. Um, I had um, quite a few hundred people watching live. Um, yeah, I had, um, and I've had thousands. Oh wow! Of people. You did it live? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I did it oh, live wow. in Blab. Yes, yeah. So, so the whole thing was 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 done live, um, um, and it was it was fun to do that. You know, maybe a little bit a little bit challenging, um, but um, I like putting myself in a challenging situation and I'm, I'm sure you do as well it's uh it's where you grow the most isn't it yeah absolutely and i think doing that live having all of that schedule uh, you know and and pre-work going into the show how did you actually orchestrate that in terms of a technical point of view was it all on skype or was it how did people join the conversation and then you sort of hand the mic to them how, how did that work well th- this was all on blab actually so i used blab for that so the the way it worked is um is is people had the link where they could call in and join. I had the list of people and the times that they were going to um, join. So as um one guest was um, sharing their their digital marketing tip, um I was um, basically letting other callers in and and then kicking people off who um had shared their point. And I was just rotating guests, so doing all the um, technical ins and outs as um as as the show went on. Wow, that is uh, that is an achievement. So props for that. Definitely, that's Thank that's uh, an amazing resource. And, and and is that available? You know, to to look at now and and to to uh, download or, or is- yeah, yeah, yes, it is. I mean, it's one of the old um, podcast episodes. Um, it's available on digitalmarketingradio.com, so you can see the replay. Um, so the replay. Um, it's probably best viewed there. It's probably easiest to find through there. It's also on, on YouTube as well. Probably if you search for Digital Marketing Predictions 2016 on YouTube, you, you could probably find it through there. Um, and of course, if you, if, you, if you want to just listen to the audio version and walk around, then you can do that through the podcast. Brilliant. Okay. So what are some of the, the apps or, or websites that, that you couldn't live without? I know we've talked about uh, Blab and a, and a few others. Are there a couple of standout tools that, that you use that you simply couldn't live without? Um, I like Boomerang, which is um, a Gmail app that I use. Um, so that helps me schedule messages. So whenever I interview someone, I then schedule the episode to be published uh, at a certain time. It's actually 4 p.m. in the UK um, on Tuesday. Don't know why I picked that time, but <laughs> that's what time the episodes generally go live each week. And then just after that, I schedule a, an email uh, to go out to the guest to say, Thanks so much for um, being a part of it. Um, here's where you can find the episode. So, th- so that makes them a- aware of that immediately. Um, I also really like the app on my iPad called Boss Jock. So that's what I use for storing my little um, um, audio effects. Um, so effects like this. DigitalMarketingRadio.com. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I can play my different effects um, through my iPad and doing that. So that's how I do everything live. Oh, that's amazing. I, I really want to do that now. I need to get myself <laughs> a, a little mix of because I've, I've been a radio jock for, for a number of years in, in the early days and, and a DJ as well. And I'm, I'm very used to having that board. And I just haven't thought about bringing that into the podcast. So more demand listeners expect some jingles and some sound effects on the next one. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, you, you have to do things to begin with because you love to do it yourself. And if, if you love to do it, then surely some of your listeners will as well like listening to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, if we could just wrap things up there, because it's been an absolute value packed episode. And I know people are going to have a, you know, ton to go away with and start to think about and implement if they want to launch their own podcast, or maybe want to do one of these online events, they can, you know, check out blab.com as well. But blab.im actually is the address. Blab.im. Brilliant. Again, that will be in the show notes. So uh, if you want to just uh, sort of sum today up, David, and then tell them, uh, tell the audience where they can can get in contact with you to find out more yeah sure i mean it's simply just um 
don't you know get in a mess of actually thinking about the technology. Um, there is so much that you can learn, but if you try and learn everything technically about what you want to do, you will actually delay being able to do um, what you're going to do and your ultimate success by months, if not years. You'll never be perfect, even if you have all the right technology, all the, the fancy microphones and mixers, your first episode will still be rubbish, probably, if you're doing a podcast. So the key is, you know, get that 50 pound or, you know, $70 microphone to begin with, plug the USB in and start talking and accept that um, you might not love your voice, but um, you're natural, you're your real self. So just get talking, get sharing content as much as you can. And then as you're doing that, as you're editing your own voice, you will improve at things over time. That's perfect. So where could people get involved, uh, you know, sorry, reach out to you and learn more about Digital Marketing Radio, your services and, and uh, yeah, chat to you if they've got any further questions? Sure, yes. Um, well, at um, Twitter is probably the most active um, network that I'm on socially. So that's at David Bain, uh, David B-A-I-N. And um, if anyone would like to get in touch, then you can either tweet me or you can visit digitalmarketingradio.com and click on the contact form on there. And um, in terms of um, you know, other things that I'm up to, I'm um, also launching a new podcast in the next few weeks, um, which is sto stories about um, how niche podcasters are achieving a lot of success um, in certain areas. Because I think there's a lot of podcasts out there um, you know, about entrepreneurship or marketing in general. And obviously I host one, you know, as, as well, you know, but um, I'm fascinated by niche podcasting as well. So I, I've just interviewed 10, pod 10, post 10, 10 podcasters on that. Uh, I've got another two to interview. Then I'm going to publish that as a new series. And, you know, if you, you know, subscribe to my updates at digitalmarketingradio.com, I'll tell you about that when it goes live. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, David. It's been an absolute blast. Thanks, Lawrence. Yeah, no problem. And that's it for another episode of the More Demand podcast. I'll be sure to see you next Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the More Demand podcast. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on iTunes and get the latest episode direct to your device every Wednesday.